Hello and welcome back to Awesome Games Done Quick 2020. My name is Zoe Vermillion and I'll be your host during the next two runs. Uh, but without further ado, I'm just going to toss it on over to our next runner, Mike Wave, running Resident Evil 4. Take it away, Mike. Hey guys, uh, my name is Mike. I go by Mike Wave on Twitch.tv. And today we're going to be doing uh, this little hin hidden gem you guys have probably never played before called uh, Resident Evil 4. And uh, yeah, let's just get right into it. Oh, I, I, I should have, wait, give me a sec there. And yeah. go. Yeah, that's fine. All right, let's go. Let's go. Resident Evil 4. All right, so uh, if my couch wants to introduce themselves really fast. Hi, I'm Maxi Loves. I just did the run of Fatal Frame. <laughs> and I'm Waifu. All right. Oh, wrong way. Come on, Leon. OK, so we're doing New Game, which is uh, different from New Game Plus. So what new game entails is that we're playing the game with a brand new file, so uh, no new game plus items or anything like that. So no infinite rocket launcher, no PRL, no Chicago typewriter, none of that. Just whatever the game gives us. So we're just going to be running around with a pistol for quite a while right now. And yeah, we're just going to be running on over now to the village section. So we're playing on professional, which is the hardest difficulty in the game. Uh, most runners run on professional for new game, and the reason for that is because of the, the game's uh, difficulty system, how it works. Uh, this game has a dynamic difficulty uh, s uh, system, which means the difficulty changes based on how the player is performing. So uh, on professional, there is no uh, difficulty adjustment, which is, we shorten it down to DA. So uh, the game is just always on the hardest difficulty, no matter how well you're performing. OK. Uh, come on, Leon. All right. So right here, we're going to shoot this enemy seven times, and that's going to go ahead and start this section up. Whoops. Oh, there we go. All right, I went ahead and changed uh, some items in my inventory there really, really fast. And the reasoning for that is so uh, when we go ahead and start doing more, more and more inventory management later, everything is going to go in the place where we want it to go, because with this game, we kind of just want to spend as le the least amount of time in the inventory as possible. Okay, I need to throw this grenade right here. Yeah, we went ahead and abused some iframes right there. So if you're vaulting, uh, you basically can take no damage from anything. So you're basically invincible for a bit. And we just abused that to just kill all those enemies really, really fast and just end this segment immediately. So uh, it ends as soon as you kill 15 enemies, but I'm pretty sure you can time it out as well, but it is much, much faster to just use a grenade to just kill them all like really fast. All right, we're going to go ahead and grab that treasure right there. So throughout this first part of the run, you're going to see me collecting a bunch of treasures. So when we get to the merchant, who is like the guy in the coat who sells us all our weapons that we're going to be using throughout the run, uh, we can go ahead and buy what we need. So all right, so one thing I should mention right here, this is the part where the game introduces you to the QTEs. And right here, we have a pretty tough one, actually, where I have to mash this pretty fast. Trying to get this skip right here. I don't think I'm going to go for it, though. It's a little risky. Oh, I got Ooh, oh, well, almost. Almost. Yeah. Close. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to wait to do the QTE right until the very end so I can actually roll into that tree and not end up behind it. But it's it's pretty negligible. You only save like a second doing that. But we call it tree skip. A very original name, I know. All right. It's great. Tree skip saves one second. And if you miss it, you die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a great. I mean, if you're going for a really good time, you, you tend to just go for it anyways. Right. Like, might as well. Yeah. OK. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the next section here. So something you're going to see Mike do a lot is uh, quick turning. Yeah. Where uh, he's going to, because he's playing on mouse and keyboard, he can just move his mouse and then press the aim button, which is a much faster way of turning in the game. Yeah, it's much, much faster than using the game's like traditional tank controls, because despite the fact that RE4 got rid of uh, the series like uh, fixed camera angles and stuff. It does very much still use uh, tank controls. But we can basically overcome that using quick turning, which is just turning the camera and then aiming like that right like right there. That's a great example of it right there, yep. yeah. Just allows us to do much smoother movement compared to just like slowly turning. Uh, you, the game does have a built-in uh, quick turn. But we don't. We just call it a 180. It's where Leon just does like a full literal 180, but it's kind of slow compared to a quick turn. All right, right here you're gonna see me do a, like a 180 quick turn, which is like where I do. A, I don't use the in-game quick turn. I just 
move my camera in like a 180 degree fashion right there. And that's something that you factors. could only do on keyboard and mouse because yep. you can flick way further yeah. on keyboard and mouse. Even do like 360 quick turns if you like really wanted to. And that's something else I should mention right now. Yes, I am playing this game on keyboard and mouse, which uh, most people do not. Uh, a lot of people do not like the keyboard and mouse controls for this game and prefer to play it on a controller for pretty understandable reasons. The uh, keyboard and mouse controls for this game are pretty unintuitive, especially compared to controller, which is how most people originally played it, I'm guessing, on, you know, like the GameCube and... Uh, Xbox 360 versions. And I would say, like, even though playing with a controller, like, I play with this game with a controller, um, even though it's a little bit more comfortable, uh, there are things that you can't do on controller that you can do on mouse and keyboard. So Mike yeah. is going to be showing off some of that in this run. Yeah. Uh, as I've started running this game, before before I started, not the humble brag or anything, but uh, before I started running this game, not many people ran it on keyboard and mouse. But we've been finding out over the years that, uh, oh, come on. We've been finding out over the years that keyboard and mouse for this game is actually like insanely busted. <laughs> it just allows us to do so many things that you normally could not do, like those type of turns, for example, as well as uh, just aiming in general. Yeah, even people like who are going for like world record times that generally use controller still make exceptions for certain strats where they switch to keyboard and mouse just because it's that much faster in some spots. Yeah, exactly. So like if you watch like a lot of the top runners who are on controllers, like you'll see them pause their game, which pauses like the, the timer in the game to just switch over to a keyboard and mouse like comfortably because they need to do a couple of shots on keyboard and mouse that just aren't good to do on a controller, for example. All right, so all right, I can make it past you guys. Okay. So you're going to see Mike uh, dodging and dipping through all these enemies, and he's able to do that because he's playing our professional. Since the difficulty is locked at the highest, the enemy aggro is also locked at the highest, which means that their attack animations are going to be super consistent and you know exactly how to bait them. Yeah, exactly. You couldn't do that if you were playing on normal. Yeah, so on... Oh, come on. There we go. All right, so on normal, because, like, the difficulty is always switching throughout the game, that means uh, enemies in general can be pretty inconsistent. There are ways, of course, to, like, manipulate that difficulty so you always keep it low or keep it high, but uh, it's not as consistent as pro, ironically enough. That's why you find a lot of people running like pro for the new game category, just because it's so much. It's like it's a lot easier to just read the enemies when you know they're always gonna kind of do the same thing. What are you buying? But of course, it's already four, so they oh. never do the same thing. Come on. All right. So you see me actually buying a rocket launcher, there. Uh, we went ahead and picked up all these treasures throughout the run just so we can buy that rocket launcher right now. And it is something you're going to see me do a lot. Like, you're not really going to see us upgrade any weapons or upgrade our inventory. Like, we don't really need to do that. Uh, we're just going to be using the rocket launcher because the rocket launcher is insanely broken in this game. And for some reason, the devs thought it was a good idea to just, like, let us buy rocket launchers whenever for a pretty, like, cheap price considering, like, just how game-breaking it is. Right, yeah. It is very game-breaking. Yeah. Uh, we can go ahead and sneak in a donation here real fast while we're moving on to the first boss of the, the run. Absolutely. We have $100 from JTB who says, Hey, hey man, oh. I'm glad to see RE4 back in GDQ and being done by a talented runner as yourself. I hope you pull off an amazing run. Mike GL. All right, thank you, JTB. For those who don't know, JTB is the one who did the previous two uh, GDQ runs for this game. Oh, I need to reset there. I'm trying to shoot this specific crow so I can get a flash grenade. There he is. Okay. Yeah, that crow always drops a flash grenade. All the other ones only drop, like, a very small amount of gold or, like, pesadas, which is, like, the in-game currency for the Pita breads. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, JTB is a, kind of a legend in the community. He, uh, huge, huge veteran and influenced a lot of people with this game. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you, JTB. Yeah, his first RE4 run is the run that got me into speedrunning, actually. Yeah, it influenced a lot of people to get into it. I know him and, like, Pitted were responsible for a lot of that. Okay, so... As you can see, for the past minute or so, we've actually been collecting a lot of these grenades as we've been running past all these enemies. I'm going to get another one right there. And these are going to come into handy throughout the village section. Uh, it might not seem like it, but all the grenades in this game are honestly, like, pretty broken as well. Yeah. Oh, I got a golden egg right there. Oh, <gasps> nice. That's for good luck for the upcoming boss. But yeah, the grenades in this game are pretty broken, and surprisingly enough, the flash grenade specifically is, like, probably the most broken one for the speed, the speed run which is funny because I think the game values it like the lowest for some reason, even though like for us speedrunners, like a, a flash is like insanely good. Okay, uh, missed, okay. 
I'm trying to get this treasure up here. All right. So this is going to be our first boss of the run. And uh, ironically enough, it is like the hardest one in the run, like arguably, I would say. I think most people would agree with me. And it is also like one of the biggest run killers in the game. Yeah, you can't shoot it with a rocket launcher. Yeah, we have to fight <laughs> this boss completely legit. And I am talking about Del Lago, who is this giant mutant salamander who lives in this lake that we need to fight on this little uh, this little rowboat with some like an infinite supply of harpoons. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go ahead and just start throwing these at him here. I'm gonna be doing some specific movements here to try and get as many throws in as I can and just reacting to what he does. So this fight, the reason it is so notorious within the community is because it is so, so random, like what patterns you get and stuff. Spe uh, specifically, this pattern coming up right here, he can do what's called an early dive where he just dives right now, oh, which is what I got right there. I kind of jinxed it. Okay, so this is the slowest pattern you can get. You lose about 20 seconds when you get this pattern uh, compared to the other patterns. He has like three different ones. Mm -hmm. uh, he has the, fa uh, the, the, the no dive, which is the fastest one where he never does this. Did I get that? I don't think I got no. that. No. Darn. Okay. That's okay. Oh, I can get three. Oh, I got three still. Whoa. Okay. Nice. That mouse keyboard. <laughs> okay. I should still be able to do this, though. I don't usually play once I get an early dive. If you get an early dive like I did right there, that is usually the sign to just end your run. <laughs> oh, darn. Because you lose so much time that you can't really recover it back, but... We're just gonna keep going. Yeah, like with this fight, there's the no dive, a late dive where he does that dive kind of late and then the early dive, which is what I got. And uh, usually don't reset if you get a late dive either. It's only the early dive where you reset just cause like 15, 20 seconds is like just such a huge, huge time loss in this game. Yeah, this game is very optimized. Yeah, I wouldn't argue. I wouldn't say it's as optimized as some of the older Resident Evil games, right, but like yeah. still, twenty sec like fifteen, twenty seconds is like so much when you're right. going for record in this game. I think when you compare it to the kind of the older Resident Evils, there's so many more mechanics and there's so much more to do with the menus yeah. in this game. So I, I would say it's very much so harder to optimize. Yeah, yeah exactly. it's getting there though. It's certainly getting there. And when it gets there, oh boy, yeah, it's gonna be. <laughs> Once you get a really good PB in this game, it is very hard to beat. You got to grind like very heavily to get it to beat it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and shoot all those down and we're going to start running with the rocket launcher. So something I should explain right now as well, uh, you actually get a faster run speed running with grenades, rocket launchers, eggs or nothing at all. It's you, like a 5% yeah, increase it's like, or something. It's like 4 or 5%, something like that, like super minor, but it is noticeable, especially later on when uh, we're going to be introduced to a glitch. But even earlier on, running around with a rocket launcher, even like if you know you're not going to need your gun for a while, is just faster because uh, you do have to go into your inventory to equip it. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the next boss right here. Uh, if you want to get in a donation real fast, go ahead. Absolutely. Uh, we have $10 from Sunblade, who says, the cool. RE4 community is with you today and wishes you good luck, Mike. Thank you for representing the game this year. Thank you, Sunblade. That is another veteran in the community, like so many names I am recognizing right now. Okay, so let's talk real fast about this boss coming up. Uh, he's very, very difficult, as you're going to see, Kappa. All right. So we're going to take this boat, and we're kind of just going to go back to where we were earlier. So as you can notice, it is nighttime right now after we beat Del Lago. Uh, Leon I, takes a nap. Yeah, he takes a long, long nap. And uh, I can explain the lore in a little bit. Uh, well, I can explain it right now after this boss. Watch, watch and learn, guys. We got him. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just shoot a rocket at his knee and he is dead. But yeah, you're seeing right there why the rocket launcher is so broken in this game. Uh, we just pick up a couple treasures, buy a rocket from our, our friendly merchant, and then uh, we insta-kill the bosses. Okay. Most of them, at least. Except for uh, our, our good friend Del Lago, who... Uh, does, does not care about your rocket launcher at all. All right, so to explain the lore a little bit, uh, Leon, who is one of the two protagonists from RE2, has been uh, promoted and now he works for the president somehow, even though he was like, I think his resume includes only being a cop for a day. And it was the zombie apocalypse. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good first day. <laughs> so he's been tasked uh, by the president to rescue his daughter, who we believe has been kidnapped by this cult who is in rural uh, Europe but it never specifies what country it is, but because all the villagers speak Spanish, it's kind of easy to figure out, oh, they're, uh, they're in Spain. 
Because uh, in the mountains of Spain yeah, somewhere. somewhere. But it's not even like Spanish Spain. And like right now, uh, yeah, talking yeah. about the president's daughter, we found her right here. This is Ashley. Uh, she is the president's daughter. And one of the, in, one of the notable mechanics of this game is that uh, this game kind of turns into an escort mission at this point where we basically have to like keep her safe while we get her out of here. And uh, yeah, a lot of people really love Ashley. She's a lot of fun. If she... <laughs> <laughs> so demanding. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if Ashley gets grabbed and an enemy runs off of her or if she dies, then the game is over. It's like you died. So we, we got to take good care of her. Uh, a lot of people are not a big fan of this mechanic in the game, but honestly, in the speed run, it's probably not like a... I wouldn't say it's like the worst thing about the run. There are way more yeah, that there's, kill your there's runs way than worse than Ashley. Yeah, like... We can actually use Ashley for some uh, practical things, like coming up right here. Uh, one thing we, or actually no, it's not here. It's coming up soon though. But Ashley is pretty good at holding doors open for us. And we can also aggro enemies with her by just telling her to wait and then follow us. For some reason, enemies will just like, just like snap out of it kind of, and just like immediately start running towards you as soon as you tell her to wait follow, which we can use to put some enemies in position. So right here is a good example. So around the time I get to the window, I'm going to tell her to wait and follow me, and that's going to move some of the enemies around wait, follow me. where I need them to be. Here. Okay, good. There are, some, there are some spicy memes in this room that can just end your run really, really fast. Okay. So telling Ashley to, uh, to wait and follow, it makes those two uh, Ganados up at the top go to the far left and then throw, so you can actually just run past them, and Ashley will run past them as well. Wait. Yeah. All right, and coming up, we have uh, the, the cabin. cabin. Yeah, my, my favorite room. Cabin. <laughs> Best part of the game. <laughs> we need some sour pleas for this cabin. Yeah, uh, if you guys want to go ahead and explain Are you trying to elements. Kill me? Use this. So he's going to knife Lewis, make him drop uh, ammo right there. Sometimes he drops a grenade, but it's pretty rare. Uh, and then he's going to aim at Lewis, make sure that after he kills that first Ganado, he doesn't uh, kill anymore. Because if Lewis shoots them off the window, then they don't get in the cabin, which means that Mike can't throw this grenade and kill all of them at once. And the whole point of the cabin is it's just like that first section where you're gonna try to kill a certain amount of enemies. But in cabin, instead of 15, it's 40. Which is so a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> so you're gathering grenades throughout the course of the run to this point and trying to kill as many enemies at once as you can with grenades. So you wanna stop Lewis from shooting them out the windows. Are you trying to kill me? And meleeing him does <laughs> man is just getting pounded. Yeah, he, he gets he gets damaged quite a bit. But the thing is, is that if Mike were to hit Lewis, what is it, four, four times. times? Five times, I think. Okay, if he does that, then Lewis actually just shoots Leon to death, <laughs> which is pretty um, yeah, it's pretty entertaining to watch, but also not very optimal. Yeah. So we're not gonna do that. Adios. So after he throws all four grenades, he's going to camp at the top of the stairs. And uh, because this is pro, uh, these Ganados are going to be running quite quickly up these stairs. So uh, it's really important to make sure you have, you know, shoddy ammo and you don't have to reload at a bad, uh, you know, a bad time. And this could be really hit. scary, too, because this enemy he's shooting right now, it's called Las Plagas. It, you, get two, you can get up to two of them in the cabin at a time, and they can instantly kill you at this amount of health. And we never upgrade our health for the rest of the run. Yeah. And they can also totally stun lock Lewis and make it so that he doesn't kill anyone. And Lewis's kills count towards the 40 kill counter. So if that happens, then you really gotta pray that you have enough shotgun ammo. Yep. Otherwise, it, you can just run out and you're Almost just sitting close. around waiting for it to there end. We go. Nice. That was a good cabin, actually. Yeah. That was good. Actually, didn't have to use my first aid too, which is uh, actually pretty rare. You usually get smack on the top of those stairs while you're reloading. Like a Ganado would just come up and. Uh, hit you with their torch, and uh, yeah, that's your first aid gone. That's part of the reason why, like, you'll see a lot of runners reset before cabin if they get hit, because they don't want to waste their first aid uh, before cabin. Leon! All right, so as you saw, we went ahead and took the right side path here, and the reason for that is because there's another Gigante here, but we can basically just run past him. We don't actually have to fight him. So I'm gonna go ahead and, like, loop here a little bit, because we need a lot of these items for the upcoming segment. But yeah, as you saw, I used Ashley to go ahead and bait an attack from that Gigante, so he can't really keep keep up with us. He can actually walk past these doors, like, no problem, but if Ashley's kind of near him, he'll, like, do a huge wind-up attack and just take extra long to break him for some reason. And now we're going to be moving on to uh, one of the longer auto-scrollers in the run. The gondola. Yep. 
Uh, there's just one thing I want to show you guys really, really fast for fun. We do not have the right costume for sky textures, uh, but we, we can show you something else though, if, like something kind of cute if Ashley actually can do here. So we're just gonna go ahead and get on the gondola, tell Ashley to wait, equip our handgun, and oh yeah, watch, watch what Ashley does when we shoot an enemy. <laughs> yeah, every time we uh, shoot an enemy, she does that. Yeah, she, she glees in us uh, killing these poor villagers who have been infected. But uh, it's actually easier to tell Ashley to wait here, so then you can just get this zoomed-in camera. Yep. All right, so we're going to be here for a little bit, so if you want to get some donations out of, way, out of the way, go ahead. Of course. Uh, we have $25 from Dragon Pixie, who says, this will always be my favorite Resident Evil game. Help me, Leon! <laughs> we have $10 from Ashley46, <laughs> says, Leon, help! <laughs> we have $10 from Metal Socks, who says, hi, Mike. Metal Socks here, and all I can say is, Leon! <laughs> Good luck! Thank you. All right, so we're nearing the end of the gondola section. I'm gonna try, come on. Oh, nice. Perfect. So what he's doing right there is he's uh, uh, a little messy, but he's uh, wasting some of that handgun ammo because he doesn't want to have to either discard it or sell it to the merchant because that's slower than just shooting it out of the gun. And he only yeah. needs about seven, eight shots to take out the truck that's uh, coming up. Yeah, you don't need that many shots uh, for the pistol coming up. And actually, we're getting towards the second segment of the game called uh, the castle. So we're going to be leaving the village uh, once we're done here and uh, moving on to the castle. And as, at the start of the castle, we're going to go ahead and just revamp our inventory completely. So we're going to get rid of our pistol, our shotgun, all of that. And we're going to swap it out for some better weapons that we're gonna, are going to be more useful throughout the run. But first off, we have uh, the final boss of the village right here, uh, known as Mendez. The Big Cheese. Yeah, the Big Cheese, as Lewis calls him. So we have the QTE right here. Beard and... physics. <laughs> so this is another boss you can kind of cheese, this time without the rocket launcher, though. So we're just going to use some incendiaries on him right here. Ah, oh, slow, Mendez. It's okay, though. Come on, buddy. There we go. Nice. And he's dead. Yeah, that boss, for some reason, is very, very weak to incendiaries. So we basically just pick up four incendiaries throughout the, the village segment just so we can kill them pretty fast without wasting our resources, really. And uh, we get them actually on the last hit with both the incendiary and the uh, barrel that's there. You hit him with two things at once, I think, because he doesn't get iframes for him. I, I'm pretty sure that's how it works. And uh, that's also one of the biggest well, one of the first uh, instances of instances of being uh, 60 FPS making yeah. a big difference. If you're on 30 FPS, uh, you don't get as much incendiary grenade damage. You need an extra grenade. So you need, yeah, you need five incendiaries in order to beat him. But uh, on 60 FPS, you need four. So just one of those things that, you know, 30 and 60 have a lot of differences. We're not going to explain all of them because there's there's a lot. We'd be sitting here for hours. Uh, but yeah. we are going to point them out when they are major differences. Yeah, like 60 is much, much faster than 30 just because everything is moving faster. But the main the main thing to know is that 60 FPS, while it is faster, uh, just hitboxes in general are much, much longer and yes. bigger. Like much, much bigger than 30. All right, so we basically took that detour just to get that fake eye, so we can go ahead and open up this door and move on to uh, this. Like, there's, it doesn't seem like there's much here, but oh no, this truck is trying to ram us. All right, I'm going to try to get this nice shot here. Darn. There we go. You can potentially just get that in one shot. Dude, all of the truck drivers in this game are crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that guy's just running up against, like, a, a door there. Like, this man does not care. All right, we're going to go ahead and leave Ashley there because uh, we don't need her anymore. And we're going to move on to the uh, castle. Later, Ashley. Leon, help! <laughs> oh, don't worry. She's with us still, though. Uh, the devs did not tell you, but she has, like, mag magic teleportation powers, actually. What are you, what are you selling? So right here, Mike is going to be selling the handgun, the shotgun, that green, yellow, red combination herb that he got in the cabin. And uh, he's also going to sell some jewels, and he's going to pick up the TMP, the semi-auto rifle, and another rocket launcher. And those are all of the weapons that he's going to be using for the castle. Yeah. Uh, the TMP specifically is something we're going to be using for out, like, the majority of the run. Like, yeah. almost the entire run, because it's basically like an upgraded pistol. 
and it's got a bigger magazine and it's yeah. way faster to aim. Aiming the handgun is a little bit slower, so mm -hmm. and it's also uh, when you have the TMP without the stock, it's also at hip uh, length or hip height. Yeah. So it's a lot easier to shoot the legs of the uh, the Ganados. Yeah, exactly. It, it's just a really, really good weapon for the speed run, even though a lot of people hate it casually. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just super, super nice. And the uh, semi-automatic rifle is like arguably one of the most powerful weapons in the game. Oh, I got a stagger there. It's OK. Ashley doesn't care, though. Yeah, she, doesn't, she, she, <laughs> she, she just shakes it off. All right, so we're going to just leave her there as bait. And we're going to go ahead and lift up this cannon here that we're going to need to use to break down that door. All right, bye, Ashley. Bye. All right, go ahead and shoot this. It's a good thing we don't need to take care of Ashley anymore, right? And uh, yeah, this is where the game kind of gets a oh, little bit more action-y. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a bunch of catapults being fired at you. You just blew open a huge door with a cannon. Like, mm -hmm. this is where the game takes a, a strange turn in terms of like how much action yeah. there really is in it. And to explain what happened there really fast, uh, shooting the firing the cannon that, in that room just despawns all the enemies for some reason. Oh, and uh, here we're going to be walking out this door and we're going to be going back in in order to reset the enemies and also prevent uh, extra enemies from coming in. On New Game Plus, you can do this room without like ever leaving it. But uh, on New Game, we, we don't want extra enemies spawning in. And there we go, we're past that. And uh, actually, let's go ahead and do another donation or two before we get to uh, the room, the one that I'm pretty sure most people remember. Okay, uh, before we jump into that donation, I just wanted to make sure that everyone's aware that we are just about $10,000 away from that ultimate difficulty incentive for Marvel Spider-Man, so get those donations coming in so we can make sure we see that. And then as for that donation, uh, we have $200 from SkibSJ, who says, who better to, res uh, who better to run Resident Evil uh, who, are, who better to Resident Evil speed run than Mike Wave, the person who's, who made the most comprehensive and detailed Resident Evil 4 speed run guide I have ever seen. <laughs> it is also 12 hours long. Yeah. <laughs> good luck on the run, don't get memed, and pray for good Novies. Thank you. Yeah, Novies are going to be a hot topic coming up in a bit, but first, uh, we have the Garador coming up, and it's like the first mini-boss of the castle segment. And a lot of people remember this boss for being uh, those blind Wolverine dudes. Uh, like Freddy Krueger looking type dudes. They're like these giant claws, but they're blind. And uh, we're just gonna go ahead and leave Ashley there. because it's, uh, like, it's like Wolverine, but he had a really bad day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we have a way of dealing with this boss pretty fast as well, especially thanks to the keyboard and mouse. And just give me one sec here. <gasps> Oh, I messed oh, up. Man. It's fine, that's it. Come on, sir. Thank you, sir. It's a good thing you didn't use that first aid spray at the cabin. I actually think I did, but I picked up an extra, so it's okay. Hey. Yeah, that's actually a pretty precise fight. Mm -hmm. You don't have much time to get some of those shots off because uh, the sniper rifle has... Uh, its fire rate is terrible. It's yeah. so slow. But if you exit aiming and then re-aim, it, like, you can shoot again. So it's faster than the fire rate. Yeah, we call that trick uh, quick scoping. And here we have what is a lot of people's probably least favorite room in the game. This is the one uh, a lot of people probably quit their casual playthroughs over. And this is the water hall. So he's going to shoot the, the crossbow guys, because if you don't shoot them, they ruin everything. Yeah. And he's also going to take out the shield guys, because you don't really have any other weapons to take out the shield guys, so you're going to use the sniper rifle. Um, yeah, the shield guys are, uh, we should mention this right now, are immune to flash grenades. Yes. They're very, very powerful enemies. Oh, oh, hello. So yeah, in theory, you could flash a bunch of enemies here, but the shield guys would still be there. Oh, OK. Ooh. This is this part's really scary. This is what the TMP is so useful for. Yeah. Is just run yeah. past and kneecap a bunch of enemies so you can get where you need to go. It's at hip height, so as soon as you aim, you're the perfect height for it. He's gonna throw an incendiary, which he picked up at the Garador section. Oh, what is that guy doing? It's the right side guy, dude. Who is this man? Right, there we go. Now he's gonna do a, a neat little manipulation where he turns around, goes to the left, goes to the right. Makes this those is knife guys go to the left. Was, this you did great. You. you did really good. Ooh. That was really good. That's the, that is the hardest part of that room right there. That's the hardest room in the game, arguably. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and that's 
over and done with. We reset that checkpoint that goes ahead and despawns all the enemies, and we can move on to the easy part of the yeah, room. Yeah, this is a really easy part compared yeah. to the first part. All right, FaZe Clan and other big, other big teams watching, uh, consider this to be my resume right here. We're gonna go ahead and just get rid of all these enemies using uh, the rifle and some quick scoping. I missed, okay. <laughs> I oh. missed again. Let's just do that again real fast. <laughs> Because we actually need our ammo, like, really, really badly. All right. All right. All right, that didn't happen, all right? Take two, <laughs> take two. Let's go. Wait, what? What happened? Oh, uh, yeah, nothing happened. Oh. Watch out for me. Watch out for me. As if we haven't been watching out for you this whole time. Fun fact, she has no lip sync during that voice line. Wait, really? Yeah, she goes, yeah. Watch out for me. Oh. All right, I don't know what's going on right now. We'll just go ahead and deal with that guy right there. So as you can probably tell, this game does get a lot more action heavy towards the castle part of the run, and it also gets much more execution heavy. Yeah. So the run just becomes much, uh, much yeah, harder once you get out of the village. Oh, this is right. I actually have to reset this again. I'm sorry, guys. We need to be fast here, because this is technically an auto-scroller. Usually I don't have any problem. It gets kind of funny that I uh, had you no... You nailed the first yeah. part. <laughs> the hard part. The, the hardest hard part. part. Watch out for me. Yeah, we need to do this fast, because otherwise our timing is just completely messed up. All right. Take three. One. Two. Three. Four. All right, let's just get these two at once. Five, six. Seven. There we go. Okay. That's much better. Yeah. There you go. First try, yeah. All right, we're also going to take a shorter route here, actually, than what I usually take. So we're going to go ahead and just do some looting for the next uh, the next minute or so. So if you want to get some donations out of the way, go ahead. Can do. We have $500 from oh, Extreme whoa. Lampshade, whoa. who right. says, Good luck, Mike. It's always great to see this game at GDQs. You've got all the RE4 boys watching and cheering you on. By the way, there's another $100 coming if you get through all three Novi areas without a death. Also, oh. hey to Maxi and Waifu on the couch. You guys are a great crew to give some great commentary. All right, that is a challenge accepted, because <laughs> I have a feeling it's going to happen. If, if we did poorly here, ah, oh, yeah, yeah. If we did poorly here, then uh, Novi's are gonna go perfectly fine. Of course, right. they always go fine. Yeah, perfectly fine. Uh, if you want to do another donation, go ahead. All right, we have $150 from Infinite Dumplings, who says, had to donate to one of my favorite games. Leon's one-liners were always so bad, but in a good way. <laughs> good luck on the run. All right, we're gonna go head back up and pick up Ashley, who should be done right about now. Leon! <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, so you saw us pick up a couple extra grenades. They're going to be useful in the upcoming rooms. And we're also going to start from here on out picking up money. Uh, we skipped most of the money drops in the village because the money drops we get in the castle and from that point forward are much, much higher. And the, the kind of the lore reason for that is because in the first part, you're fighting like these poor villagers who understandably don't have much money. And then here you're killing a bunch of monks who are like in this nice, nice castle, so they go ahead and have more money. All right, so we skipped the cutscene, but Ashley has been kidnapped again, so we are by ourselves again. Thank goodness. And now we have what is arguably the most uh, notorious enemy in this game, at least speedrunning wise. If you guys want to go ahead and introduce him. Hmm, Novistadors. Yeah. What can we say about Novistadors? <laughs> they're like big crickets, and they're angry. And they're invisible. And they're invisible. They go invisible, and then once they want to attack, they go, you know, you can see them. But uh, they have a couple of attacks that are really annoying. They can, they can make a QTE happen where you got to press whatever button it is you have binded to kick, and that's slow. And they also have another attack where they grab you and spit acid on your face. That's, that's pretty. Slow. That's pretty slow. Has a cool death animation though. I like that yeah. one. Um, and then they have the attack you want, which is the swipe, because you're actually able to walk, or not walk, but run past the swipe. And what he's doing right now is he's turning his camera. And the reason why he's doing that while he runs past is because it manipulates the Navistadors to do the swipe attack. Does it always work? No, but it's pretty consistent. <laughs> yeah. 
mostly what the t camera turn does is it keeps so they don't do that kick prompt QT. Yeah. Because that is like virtually impossible to run away from. Even yeah. if you have dimming glitch, which lets you run way faster, which we'll see later. Um, if you see it, you just always hit it because you cannot run it. It's like impossible. Yeah, just Novi's are just notorious for just how random they can be. Like even if you have perfect movement and you do everything perfectly, they'll sometimes just like do whatever they want and just decide to grab you and then another one will come up while you're recovering and lost your iframes and just swipe at you and then uh, they kill you. Yeah. And right there, uh, he jumped down to join those cultists' little gathering, but they were all pretty <laughs> upset about it. Yeah. Leon's a party pooper. Yeah, you're not invited, Leon. All right, here we have one of the newer glitches that have been found recently, if I can get it. It I've used been... to be 30 FPS. Uh, exclusive. Mm -hmm. Exclusive, but who found the I, way I to do it? I think it was Yushi. Yushi. I'm pretty Yushi? sure Yushi was the one who found it. Yeah, he's a Japanese runner and the current world record holder. Uh, very, very good runner. So he's going to throw a flash nade to flash everyone except for the, the red zealot, and he's going to throw an incendiary. And then immediately At a very specific spot. Yeah, we got it. There it is. Oh, there's nice. a fly. Ah. ah. <laughs> so, if you hadn't have done that, he would get up and run to uh, oh, the Gatling boy. gun downstairs. He would run to like upstairs, and you'd have to shoot him there. Which, if you miss, you would go all the way to the Gatling gun. I might get hit here. So. No, you're. Good. Oh, never mind. Okay. All right, guys. Hard password coming up. One, two. Three, four. It worked. Nice. Wow. Wow. Easy. Yeah, a lot of the puzzles in this game might seem pretty difficult, but once you break them down in the number combinations, they're actually pretty simple. They're baby mode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, super simple. I'm going to go ahead and take this herb right here for safety because these scythe enemies do not play nice sometimes. Yeah, they're pretty brutal. Yeah. They can throw their scythes, which is like the worst thing they could do. They also have rocket launchers, like what? And also, if you don't have like absolutely full HP, everything in this area of the game can insta kill you pretty much. Mm-hmm. I might need to shoot this guy. Yeah, I think. Oh! Okay. Ooh. <laughs> the clench. Excuse me. Okay. Nice. We're out. And we're going to go ahead and switch to the rocket launcher again because we are going to be running for quite a bit here without using any weapons. And we want that extra movement speed. He's just going to be picking up a couple jewels. Yeah. And we're coming up on the, the, the doge maze. Uh, pretty spooky part for a lot of people when they first play this game. You're literally in a maze filled of dogs. And uh, they're not they're not the nice, happy kind of dogs. They're the dogs who like to, you know, bite you and stuff. Really concerned. Yeah. But uh, with the dogs in this game, something to mention is that uh, they're not really as dangerous as the dogs in uh, the previous Resident Evil games, mostly because it's really easy to dodge them. All you need to do is just not run straight at them and point your camera up as well. <laughs> the dogs are free. <laughs> the meme yep, lives like right on. There. They're like legitimately easier in this game than to remake. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which is it, where the meme comes from. In, a, in RE1 Remake, for example, the dogs in that game are just notorious for being like major, major run killers. They kind of just do whatever they want. But in this game, they're, they're not that bad. Uh, if you want to go ahead and like read a couple of donations while we're running past this, then go ahead. Sure. Uh, we have $15 from The Merchant, who says, an FF6 run, you say? Ah, I'll buy it at a high price. <laughs> Very nice. And we have $15 from The Shaded Master, who says, Leon, help me, there's an infected goose. Honk. <laughs> All right. So we went ahead and picked up those two puzzle pieces, which we need to exit this area. And as you see, we uh, got out scot-free. And we're gonna go back to our TMP here and open that that door. And in that cutscene is where and then where, Ada, yeah, Ada, Ada just shows randomly up. shows up. You haven't seen her. You thought she was dead, and she's like, "Hey, Leon." And Leon's like, "Dude, what?" Oh, I wanted to pick that up, but whatever. <laughs> and then she throws her sunglasses, and it's a flashbang. And Leon's like, "Oh no! <laughs> oh my my whole existence." Okay, I think I can do this here with 19 bullets. So we're yeah, you stuck can. in this cage, and we need to shoot this lockout to get out. Ow, my knee. All right. <laughs> and when, when you kick a door like that and there's an enemy behind it, they go flying. Yeah, they just, like, zoom out. It's great. All right, we're going to shoot these Beautiful. enemies right here. The perfect amount of ammo. Yep. 
Unfortunately, I do not have enough to reload, so we're just gonna use the rifle. Actually, I am gonna need to pick up this extra. Oh, this guy somehow lived. That's okay, though. The bullet just went right over his head, I guess. All right, and we're gonna reload right here for the next part. All right, yeah, that's plenty of ammo now. All right. And Lewis, as you can see, has been killed. Unfortunately. <gasps> Lewis. 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 Double. Nope, oh, yep, double. And then I messed up right there. There we go. All right, so we're gonna use those, we're gonna use this rifle to free Ashley real fast. And get rid of these enemies for her so she can run out. And this is like another part where you're, it's kind of like an auto scroller, kinda. You're just like killing enemies, waiting for Ashley, and then just picking up stuff that you need. But she's taking her time here. Yeah. You're definitely not in danger, Ashley. The door's locked. I can't open it. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get rid of this other crowd of enemies right here. We're going to shoot this guy in the knee, and then we're going to grab this handy-dandy nade. And... Uh, oh, he got her. Okay. I think I took too long on that nade. Just a little too long. There we go. You're okay, Ashley. Easy save. That strat's actually really precise. He has to throw the grenade so it kills everyone in the room at the same time. Mm -hmm. And if he doesn't kill the red zealot with that nade, then another wave of enemies will spawn, and it's super slow. Yeah. yeah, killing the red zealot is like the most important part, because if you don't kill the red zealot, then yeah, enemies will just infinitely spawn. Well, I don't know if it's infinite, but they go for a while. Also right here, for those who wanted special costume one, there you go. But yeah, killing the red zealot in that room is the most important part, just because you need to get rid of those enemies. And this is the only part of the game where you play as Ashley. Yeah. And fun fact, uh, if you have an NTSUJ version of the game, this whole Ashley section has fixed cameras. Yeah, it's like the one part of the game that has fixed camera angles. Not but sure why, yeah, but... Yeah, it's only the Japanese version for some reason. Yeah. I think the first time I saw that, I, I was so confused as to why it, <laughs> it suddenly switched that way. I don't even know if the devs knew why they added that in for one segment. But yeah, it just kind of continues that RE tradition of like, you play as another character for a little bit. I think they've been doing it in nearly every game. And we're just gonna go ahead and just go around collecting these puzzle pieces. Is that the same version of the game that you can suplex an enemy as Ashley? Or is that uh, that's GameCube specific, I believe. Okay. I did not even know about Ashley suplexing it. Yeah, if you lead one of the Ganados to a door and then you kick it, or kick it open, if you like push, push it open, then it sends them to their knees, and for some strange reason, they let Ashley have a suplex animation, like a, <laughs> like a QTE, so you press the button and she suplexes the Ganado. Does she get, like, Leon's skeleton while she does that or something? I, don't I have no idea, because <laughs> I haven't seen it in a little while, but it happens. Yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and run past all those enemies. Uh, we went ahead and got that, uh, that second Chimera piece, so throughout Chapter 3 of the game, which we're on right now. We've been collecting these three Chimera pieces so far. We got one, and then we got that second one as Ashley. And we need that to open that door that we saw earlier before Waterhall in order to advance with the game. And I should mention right now that Chimera Wall is, like, one of the most sought-after skips for this game, probably. Because if we found a way to skip that wall by having to go around collecting these three pieces, like, it would probably save, like, I don't know, like, 30 minutes. Oh, I did not want to... I opened that door from behind somehow. Okay. But yeah, if we somehow found a way to skip Chimera Wall, we'd probably save 30 minutes off the run, which would be massive. Yep. It's been toyed with a lot, and there, yeah. there was even a bounty for it, but it just it's never been found. Yeah, I don't I don't even know if there is a way to do it, honestly, at this point. But I shouldn't say I shouldn't say that because there's there's another skip coming up that like nobody ever thought of for some reason, but it's actually really, really simple to do. So like goes to show that even if the game is as old as this one is, like there are still some skips out there that we have not found that uh are actually pretty simple to do. All right, so we're back as Leon, and we're gonna be go ahead and collect that final Chimera piece. And I would say Chapter 4, specifically, is where the game really starts to get wacky. Like, yes. it, it happened in Chapter 3, as soon as we got in the castle, that it became more action-oriented. And the difficulty also ramps up a bit. Yeah, yeah. But, like, Chapter 4 especially is when it goes off the rails. As you can see with this part right here, there is somehow, like, all this lava inside a castle. Salazar imported all of this lava via Amazon Prime delivery <laughs> and stuck it all in this room, just this one room. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get rid of that enemy. Uh, this one guy we can just let live. He doesn't really cause much trouble, usually. 
commentator first. All right, we're gonna go ahead and use the rifle to shoot out the chains. Oh yes, this room also has dragon statues. That yeah, that brief fire. Brief actually. fire, yeah. This room is wild. <laughs> yeah, I've actually been hit by the fire once. I think it happened a couple of months ago, and it was like the first time that it ever happened to me, and I'm like, whoa. Oh! Commentator's curse? Commentator's curse. I shouldn't. I just shouldn't say anything from now on, right? Because that guy is almost never there. Yeah, he never does that. Yeah, that is like extremely rare, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and switch to the rocket launcher right here. I, if that guy hadn't run up, I would have gone ahead and reloaded the rifle, so we wouldn't have to do it again later, but uh... That's okay, though. Yeah, we're just walking back to the Camara wall now. So yeah. Actually, now would probably be a good time for a couple donations. Yep. All righty. I've got $12 from Kuzpo. It says, greetings from Finland. Been watching Games Done Quick since 2011 and so proud of you all and what you're doing. I lost both my parents to cancer. But Resident Evil 4 is one of my favorite games of all time. And what I'd like to say is, Ashley, go hide. Microwave, go fast. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> got time for another? Yeah, go ahead. We've got $150 from German Guy 101 who says, been watching HDQ every year the last seven years. Lost my uncle to cancer seven years ago as well. We miss you, Jens. Hashtag beat cancer hype. Hi. Hi. So we're going to go ahead and move to uh, one of the first two puzzles that we do with Ashley here. Uh, this one's actually pretty simple. And I'm going to go ahead and take the time to also reload my weapons. Uh, I would say you can actually get another donation out of the way, actually, while we're going through this. Yeah, $100 from Fast B says, Whoa, Final Fantasy VI is a bonus game. Let's do it. Great job to all the runners. Keep up the good work. All right, so right here, we're going to be pushing these statues. Like, this is like a classic RE type puzzle right here. If it involves a moving statue to put under these pressure plates, then it is definitely an RE puzzle. All right, so we're going to go ahead and move those. We're going to use Ashley to hold one open, and we're going to open this door. And I'm going to go ahead and use the TMP to shoot out all these lights really fast. So you're supposed to walk into this room and like it's a trap, but if you shoot the lights before you go in, like it doesn't yeah. even activate. A lot of people don't know that, so mm -hmm. there you go. And Salazar, we haven't really explained who Salazar is. He's no. He's like inherited this castle from his father. He's, he's like some three foot four dude. <laughs> he's got a <laughs> Very silly voice. Fellow. I am Ramon Salazar. And we just call him Salad Bar. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my castle. Yeah, Salazar is probably like one of the most iconic villains from from this game. Yeah, I would say definitely. Just like it's such a wacky design that they went with. It just goes to show like what direction this game goes in later. Wait. All right, I'm actually gonna go ahead and reload the rifle right now. And watch out for that statue. Oh, something I should mention right now with the QTEs is when a prompt like this shows up where we have to like dodge something, I can mash. Like, there's usually only there, no, there's only two. Uh, QTE com like combinations you can get, and if you just match both of them at the same time, then you'll always pass the QTE because this game doesn't recognize when you press the wrong one. And right now we're gonna fight these armaduras, is what they're called. They're like clogus that are inside these suits of armor, and we're just gonna be shooting the rifle at their helmets, and that'll go ahead and just instantly get rid of the helmet, and then we use a flash to just kill them immediately, because all the clogus in this game just die to flashes like instantly. That's something a lot of people probably know about. Memed. Yep. Meme helmet. That's okay, though. Oh, you did a side oh, swipe. There. What? I think I had iframes. You had iframes. Yeah. That was... I was supposed to die there. <laughs> Dude, that was a roller coaster of emotion. Yeah, if 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 one of those uh, giant tentacle plagas come out and, like, try to bite you, they'll just instantly bite Leon's head off and you die. It's, it's pretty gruesome. And what's crazy is that if you had gotten hit any, like, sooner... You'd be dead. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So that room was but yeah, that, crazy. That one enemy not uh, getting his helmet shot off, like the, the bullet just bounced off him, mm -hmm. that is uh, not supposed to happen. That, that is something that only happens usually if uh, the game is being especially cruel to you. All right, so we went ahead and collected these two grails, and that's going to allow us to open this door. There we go. And now it's time for Novistador's tooth. Yeah, so if you've ever watched my streams or watched like any RE4 runner, you'll know how bad this room is. This is like arguably the most random room in the game. This is where a lot of runs go to die. Like I think every runner just goes into this room expecting like, hey, this PV pace you have, you're, this PV pace run you have going right now, it might die. But yeah, these Novis, they're back. And uh, this time they fly around too, which uh, they're actually a lot more dangerous when they fly around. Oh, baby. Okay. Oh man. This is sketch. 
Ooh, that went really nice. well, actually. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> so, Mike used a couple of flashbangs, and like the reason why you want to do that is because if you don't, they most of them just keep flying, like, and they'll just push you around, and it's, it's yeah. a terrible time. They but if you use the flashbang, exactly, yeah, they can I'm, stun lock you. It's I'm terrible. pretty sure that room without flashbangs is like impossible to do. Yeah, it yeah. is possible to do with one flash. Very, very hard, very risky, but it's possible. But no flash is like basically impossible. And how effective the flashes are as well as RNG, because Darn. if they're flying, the flash like barely affects them. But if they land, yeah. they fall on their back and they're there for like five seconds or so. So you just like kind of pray that they land when you're running past them. Right. So yeah, I got hit by a mortar there, which uh, that also usually doesn't happen. Yeah, that's, that's random. Uh, a phrase you're going to hear me saying a lot throughout this run is that usually doesn't happen. Because uh, once you get to this part of the run, that is like, there's just a lot of things that can happen in this game that usually don't happen, but uh, the game will just, like, there's like a 5% chance that this thing will happen, and like, you'll lose a lot of time if it happens. And this is game's done quick, so these yeah. things are gonna happen. Exactly. So we're gonna go ahead and shoot the, all these planks off so we can activate this bridge. And uh, there's no enemies up until then, but now they all come in once you activate it. But yeah, these guys are actually not too bad to get past. Commentator screws? Question mark? Nice. Unless you get okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's possible for this guy to shoot you as soon as you land, like, uh, land off there, but uh, I got pretty lucky. Okay, so I think after this after this point, this room is pretty free to... Yeah, you got this cutscene here and throw us the dynamite. They're gonna throw the dynamite, but I'm just gonna stand here and reload. Because it, it won't affect you if you don't move. Right, and we're just gonna go ahead and run past a couple more of these guys. Nice. It's smooth. All right, that was a good room. So uh, he's been ha he's been holding that rocket launcher for quite some time. Yeah, you might uh, be wondering what it's for. Yeah, exactly. And he's he's gonna be using it very soon. Excuse me, sir. Just gotta do some yeah, dodges. Me, sir. Okay. Go. There's two Garadors now. Don't worry, though. We got him. Man, that was smooth. <laughs> that last sniper shot. Oh man. Yeah, I call it the hog shot. Pog, Pog's <laughs> in the chat. Yeah, so it is time to say to, goodbye to our rifle, though. Uh, if we want to go ahead and talk about the Ditman glitch, which was mentioned earlier, it is by far the most important glitch in this entire game. And it happens because uh, we get the striker oh, well, right here. You're going to see me buy it. It is by far the most important weapon we get in this entire run. Yeah, so from here on out, the run is going to revolve entirely around uh, the striker shotgun and the Ditman glitch. And this is basically what you do is you interrupt your aiming animation with the striker and switch to anything else. And all of your animations are increased by like one and a half times. So you'll see when he climbs this ladder, he's going way fast. Yeah, and, I'm actually gonna beat the camera here. Yeah, and it stacks with the movement speed increase from running with like a grenade out or something. Yeah. So pretty much in every room of the game, it's almost worth it to Ditman. But it is deactivated by something like that, like that cutscene or doing a QTE, or getting hit, or healing. Or opening aiming doors. with the striker, or yeah. opening doors, yeah. or mm. getting stunned, or just about anything Most things, game. yeah. So a lot of the late game stuff is optimizing when to dip in and like trying to reduce losing it as much as possible. All right, we have a very hard skip coming up. This is like arguably like the hardest skip in the entire game. It's on like, 60 FPS, yeah, yeah. It's like a minor one. Like on 30 FPS, that's free, but on 60 FPS, that's really hard. Yeah, and since you don't want to do the QTE to lose your Ditman, you dodge those. That second one was slick. Yep. That's, I think, like, everyone has their own way of doing that skip, but yeah, this right here is Verdugo. He is like uh, one of Salazar's henchmen who he sends after us. Oh, he almost got me there. But uh, we're going to make mint meat of him using our favorite weapon, the RE4 Special. Nice. Yeah, so something to mention right there is Verdugo is actually like one of the most durable enemies in the entire game. Mm -hmm. uh, he actually will survive a rocket launcher directly. Uh, so you have to freeze him because when he's frozen, I think the way it works is like uh, he takes like three, like three times more damage or something like that. And uh, he takes 10,000 damage normally and the rocket launcher does 30,000. So we have to hit him with the, the ice, that canister, so he'll die in one rocket launcher and he'll drop that treasure, which we need for later. All right, that's 4-1. That is the longest chapter in the game, and we're going to be moving on to uh, another pretty notorious room. I'm going to go ahead and grab some of these herbs here for Welcome. safety. And guess what we're going to buy here? A another rocket, rocket launcher. launcher. Yeah. I was hoping for the Red 9 stock. <laughs> the Red 9 stock, yeah. 
Uh, so actually, we're not going to be using this rocket launcher on a boss. We're actually going to be using it uh, to blow up this boulder right here because it basically lets us just skip this room for free. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to be coming up to our first out-of-bounds section right here. So Most of the out-of-bounds only happens once you get the striker, I should mention. Right. I was about to say, like, the Dittman glitch allows you to uh, not only just speed up, but a lot of your animations, like like you saw climbing the ladders and stuff, it speeds up. So when he uses this little zip line here, it speeds up as well. <laughs> so if he uses it once and then runs back... Before the zip line gets before back. Before the zip line gets back, it's going to send him further than it usually would, meaning he's going to clip through the wall. There we go. Just like that. And there's normally two El Gigantes that you have to fight here from... Uh, there was the, there are those bosses from earlier, but there's two of them, and they're a lot tankier. And one of them went to Hot Topic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we are coming up now to the third Novista Door room. Just can't get enough of these guys. Fortunately, this is the last time we'll be seeing Novista Doors, but this is also one of the worst rooms in the game. Yeah, this is another very, very random room. I wouldn't. I would say it's not as bad as Novis 2, but uh, it's pretty bad too. Nice. Okay, getting out of that tunnel is like the first danger point. Oh god! What? Yeah, it's that kick. Okay. Oh, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead. And, uh, I wanted the incendiary. Okay. So yeah, as you see, when you take damage, you kind of have to like just go back into your inventory and read it, man. This is not good. Not good. Don't get comboed. Please. Yeah, don't get comboed. Want to learn how to do an infinite? I'm gonna grab that for safety. Yeah, I was, I was actually about to suggest that. Oh, oh my oh, gosh! Oh, I say. Okay. <laughs> okay. You're seeing how powerful the camera manip is in this game. Yeah. If, doors. if any of them were flying, he he would yeah, be I in not. trouble. Yeah. But they were all on the ground, so they were all like. <laughs> all right, I'm expecting that donation now from Experian Lampshade. I think he's the one who made that gamble, right? Yeah. Uh, we yes. Are out. We are yes, done with no Vista doors for the rest of the I think run. He said like another hundred bucks. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, this is like a. We, we kind of mentioned that this is the part of the run where uh, you actually start the run because you, now you're done with Novis, so a lot of the random parts are out of the game. Not to say that there's no like RNG left, but with Novis out of the way, uh, it is a lot less troublesome. A little before. less sweaty. Yeah. Yeah, the run doesn't start till after Novis 3. Yeah, there that's what we normally say. All right, so I think I'm good on money, actually, for like the rest of the run, so we're not really going to be doing any more money pickups. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to go ahead and run straight to this lever. Uh, before we get to the major skip coming up, uh, you can go ahead and read a donation. Yeah, uh, the game's getting a bit meta, because I have a donation here from Ashley Graham for $25. <laughs> says, Leon, help us to fight cancer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to go ahead and dip man to our grenade here. Something I should mention, the reason we call that glitch the dip man glitch is because the guy who found it was named uh, dip man i'm pretty sure that's how the story goes that's yeah. that was his tag on game facts from like way back in the day because they did find this glitch uh when it was out only on gamecube and it's just worked on every single version since like capcom never patched it out for some reason yeah some of these tricks are actually pretty old yeah we're gonna go ahead and nip that lady in the pointing at us like, super old. Like, Dittman works on every version of the game, and the skip you're about to see has a version that works on every version of the yeah, game, even yeah. all the way back to GameCube and PS2. But it is fastest on Steam, for sure, though. Like, yeah. it is by far the easy. It's really easy on Steam. All right, we're going to get out of this room using our Dittman TMT. So unlike Salazar's Queen Grail room, you can't shoot those before you enter the room. Yeah. So he has to activate them. And you also have those, like, like uh, head crab looking things to deal with. All right, so this is the glitch right here. This is the minecart skip, and this is how it's done. We're just going to go up to here, hold up left, and nice. We're out of bounds, and this is going to allow us to skip the entire minecart section. So normally, we would have to ride that all the way down. You're going to see, we would normally have to ride it all the way across the map and then down this spiral, but thanks to the minecart uh, mine skip, we just go out of bounds and 
run our way to the exit without having to I think it's like around anything. 90 seconds of time yeah, saved. Yeah, it's, it's something, something crazy. Like it's like that. 100 seconds maybe. It yeah. might even, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. Like even, it even saves time if you don't have Dittman. Yes. You run like way slower. Yeah, if you're doing like a no merchant run or something. Man, I remember there are some like really classic clips out there of like some of the veteran speedrunners reacting to when this glitch was first found. Oh yeah, <laughs> and like freaking out. It's just like, it just changed the game entirely because all of a sudden nobody's PV'd matter anymore, you know? And we recently, so this, this version that I did uh, right here only works on Steam, mm -hmm. like Steam 60 specifically. But we, like Trent me uh, mentioned, Waifu, there is a version now that works on every single version of the game, including uh, GameCube and like all those older versions. And uh, if you want to go ahead and read one, one or two more donations while we're running out, then go ahead, because we're just running here. Can do. Uh, speaking of meta, I've got a $10 donation from Leon Kennedy. It says, you're small time, salad bar. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, five dollars yeah. from Thirteen Lightning says, "Donating during a game, I was always too scared to play myself, but I loved watching my brother play." Let's get Final Fantasy VI bonus game unlocked. Five dollar donation train. All right, so we're gonna be moving on. As you saw, we're, we were having to deal with all those uh, villagers again. And so the lore explanation for that is because uh, we basically went into the mine where they found the original uh, Les Plagas parasite, and that's how all the villagers got infected because they were all working inside the mines. Mm -hmm. And because we went back to that area, the game decided to use uh, villager enemies again, but we're not gonna see them anymore, though. There's actually like quite a like good chunk of lore in this game, but it's not really used. Yeah, because it's, it's actually really interesting, but yeah. the game is like doesn't really take itself too seriously either. All right, this is a pretty, pretty hard part right here. Because as you can Whoa. see, there's a lot of enemies to deal with. Did you mean to shoot that? No, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at, oh, oh, I did not mean to jump down there. That's okay, though. That's okay. Not a, not a big time loss, really. Gotta run back around. Yeah. This is a very execution-heavy part of the run. Oh, he actually is. So is the next uh, room or two. There's an example of why 60 FPS is brutal. He, like, pre-attacked before Leon was even up yeah. there. Mm -hmm. In particular, the mace hitbox is like a ginormous. Yeah, the, yeah, the right? mace hitbox is like by far the biggest one in the entire game. Uh-oh. Goodbye. Enjoy. <laughs> what is this guy doing? Okay. He's having a grand old time. <laughs> yeah, normally this room, this room is a lot faster, but I jumped a little too early back there. And now we have the hardest QT in the game as oh, we're no. being chased by this giant mecha Salazar, which the game has no explanation for existing, really. It's Captain Crunch. <laughs> Eat my cereal. <laughs> it doesn't scrape the roof of your mouth. It doesn't. I tried it. <laughs> this right here is the hardest QT in the whole game. There we go. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, on, on 60 FPS, that QTE, you, you have to mash so fast in order to actually... Yeah achieve it. It's and you really just straight weird. up die if you don't mash fast yeah. enough. Like the, because it's like it's basically just bugged on 60 FPS. Like it, the game just expects you to mash faster than you humanly could, honestly. Yeah. And because he's playing on mouse and keyboard, like it's actually a little bit harder, I would say, yeah. on mouse and keyboard. Because on controller, or at least for me, I like use both of my thumbs and it's I, it's not as exhausting. Oh. Oh. He wasn't supposed to throw there. Come on, Dynamite guy. Chill. Dynamite guy always with me in He's not vibing. No, no scythe guy, okay. Yeah, usually there's a scythe guy there. If he doesn't get hit by the barrels, we're going up. All right, he got rid of those barrels for me, though. Get rid of that. So this is the classic Capcom elevator that they put in, like, all their games. Basically, if there's too many enemies on it, then it stops going up. So yeah. he has to position himself correctly and knock them all off as fast as possible to reduce the amount of time that the elevator stopped. Um, this is way easier on mouse and keyboard in, in particular. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There is a new strat that we found for doing uh, the elevator that was that works pretty much only exclusively on keyboard and mouse, but uh, it's slower RTA, so I'm just doing the old one. Mm -hmm. And it's really cool in particular because it shows a mechanic that's not showed anywhere else in the run. You can actually shoot the striker and use it while keeping Dipman, which we didn't, a lot of us didn't know was possible. Yeah, but apparently it's not like recently. a year ago. Um, but basically what you do is you, you Dipman, then you switch back to the striker, and then you aim the knife and pick your mouse up off of the the mouse pad and then aim and then when you go back to aim you have Dittman still. Oh, I think I can get past him, okay. Yeah. Alright, that was a pretty clean elevator though. So even though we got hit by that dynamite down there, like getting getting a clean elevator is a lot more important, honestly. Mm -hmm. 
and we're going to be moving on to uh, the final part of the castle. So we are technically on the last chapter of the castle, but this fight right here is going to be the last one, and then we're going to be moving on to the last segment known as the island. So uh, another boss fight. This one's like a pretty crazy one, but uh, you can guess how we're going to do it already. I'm moving up to this merchant, and I'm going to open the buy menu. <laughs> I like how that Kanata whispered in your ear, and he's like all the way down on the... the yeah, you can hear him floor. pretty high up. It's like, what? Sal All right, so Salazar has been consumed by, like, the Queen Plagas, I think that is. And uh, we have to get rid of him to pass. So guess what we're going to do? He's Ten dead. Shot. That shot's actually a little bit more precise than you might think. I've yeah. definitely lost some runs because you have to shoot him in the face with a rocket. Yeah, and you have to reset the room if you miss it. Cause yeah. the as you can guess, the rocket launcher is gone once you fire it once. It's like a one-time use thing, unless you have the infinite rocket launcher, which you can only get in New Game Plus. All right, so we're going to grab that money. As you can see, all the boss enemies in this game just drop a lot of money, and it's very, very useful for a new game run because it just lets us buy everything we need, basically. Rip salad bar. <laughs> yeah. So there is a glitch, actually, on 30 FPS that allows you to skip uh, the Salazar fight. You just go out of bounds and then just walk out of the room. But uh, unfortunately, it does not work on 60 FPS. What are you? Uh, uh, well, that we know of. Yeah. Yeah. It very, there very well could be a because, good sound uh, for it. Because there is a skip coming up right now that was 30 FPS exclusive. Yeah. And it was found uh, to, be, to be possible on 60 FPS. And it's actually faster and than the old setup. Dip, and, it and you can do it. Yeah, you can dip. do it on every single version with or without dip, man. And it's faster. And this is it right here. Yeah. So he's going to be looking for a specific climb up animation. I, think I got he it. Got it. He's going to quick right turn right, there we and go. boom, he's out of bounds. And now what he's going to do is he's going to run over here, activate this boulder QTE, and it teleports him to where he's supposed to be for the QTE. Yeah. So now he can actually just Ditman again and go to the ladder, and he skips this entire section. It's pretty big, actually. Yeah, that skip saves about 40 seconds, I think. I, I remember waking up the day that I was found, and like. I couldn't believe it, and then I saw how the skip was done, and I'm like, is it really that simple? Yeah. And yeah, it, it really is. It makes you wonder what other simple skips may yeah. be hidden in this game. RE4, it never ends. Yeah, like, so most skips in this game are done by, like, dropping down off a ledge with Ditman active at, like, a specific angle, but that one was found by just climbing up a ledge instead, which uh, we never thought of, apparently. And boom, new skip. All right, so we're going to be running past a couple of these rooms, and right now we got the infamous oven man. Uh, I don't know what he was doing in that oven, but uh, yeah, we can just quick. He was vibing. <laughs> and basically, we're trying to get Ashley back. She's been moved again out of, uh, out of the castle segment into this island, and she's being held captive here. Uh, right little here. skip here. Yeah, this is called the shutter skip. We're going to use Dip Man to basically get past the shutter before we are supposed to. There we nice. go. Yeah, by just moving into that little corner with Ditman, we can just move at the right time and just completely nullify the shutter. You're supposed to, like, usually sit there and, like, kill all the enemies while the shutter is open in order for it to, like, permanently open, but that's slow, and we're trying to go fast. And now we're being introduced to one of the more famous enemies of the game, the Regenerator. A lot of, uh, a lot of us were probably spooked by this enemy, but you'll see that in the speedrun, You'll, you'll find that the regenerators are way too slow. Yeah. They just, they're so derpy. Bye. They're dangerous, but they're so derpy. Yeah, they're our favorite, they're our favorite enemy, like, unironically, as speedrunners, because uh, they're slow, kind of dumb, and easy to get past. Yeah, you can debate Un them. Un yeah, easy. unlike Novies and stuff. They're, they're easy to get past. And there's not too many of them, too. Yeah. So right here, we're going to go ahead and upgrade our card so we can use it to rescue Ashley. And we're not going to get the thermoscope because uh, we actually don't need... So there is a scope that the game gives you in order to kill these regenerators because uh, you're the way you're supposed to do it is you're supposed to put that scope on a rifle and then uh, shoot these, like, weak points on their bodies because usually they're too tanky to, like, actually kill with, like, any of your other weapons. But uh, we have Ditman, so we don't need to kill them. We can just run past all of them. And they don't actually have that much HP yeah. as well, so they'll die to, like, a rocket shot or, like... A few hundred knife slashes. Yeah. yeah. Something you could do, actually, is, like, you can keep them, like, immobilized <laughs> on the ground and just uh, knife them over and over again, and they can't do anything about it. And on some categories, I know, like, no merchant. No like, merchant, how you, yeah. how you deal with them. 
All right, so got to get the flash. Nice. Just gonna dip, man, past all these enemies. We don't got time to deal with that. And we need this card in order to access uh, Ashley's room specifically that this Iron Maiden is holding. And an Iron Maiden is basically like a regenerator with spikes all over its body. Oh, he died pretty pretty far there. Okay. It's so fast, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that happens if you fire a little too early. Why did you have to shoot the CRTs? <laughs> yeah. I couldn't knife the CRTs like you're supposed to. Smash players are screaming at you. <laughs> <laughs> Those are a precious commodity. All right. So we're going to do this little manip here so we can move past these enemies. Okay. That one, that's a newer one, yeah. Yeah. A bit risky. Yeah. And bait these guys out, these Mad Max looking dudes. Those guys can actually one shot you as well. They're very dangerous, especially in a part coming up that we'll talk about when we get there. But for right now, they're not too bad. Wait, We're going to use a flash here, deal with all these enemies. And uh, if you actually want to go ahead and uh, get a donation out of the way while we move on to the next part, then go ahead. I've been waiting. Uh, we have $100 from Extreme Blame Shade. Yay! It says, <laughs> well, I'm a man of my word. Here you go. <laughs> Great run so far. Good luck on Elevator. Thanks, Ricky. Uh, you can do another one if you want. Yep. Here's $10 for great gameplay and commentary. This is from Merchant Lover. And says, I'll send in another $10 if the runner and or couch can do their best merchant impression. Uh, I don't know if I can. I don't know. I'll buy it at a high price. <laughs> that was pretty good. I don't think I could beat that one. <laughs> this is what he sounds like, that when you're selling him all the jewels. Yeah, oh yeah, and you keep like canceling out of the menu. Yeah. You'll like just keep repeating the same voice line over and over again. But it's like kind of remixed like a YouTube poop or something like that. It's not just about shooting, it's about <laughs> reloading. That's what he says about the broken butterfly. <laughs> Does he really? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't played this game casually enough, I guess. All right, right here we have the home run strat. That is what we have dubbed it. Up. Oh, I need, I need that. All right, so we're just basically going to be running circles around this room to deal with the enemies and throwing a flash. I'm going to bait that guy out. Oh, that Whoa. guy was not supposed to hit me. This track can be really dangerous because you have to, like, run through all the enemies the yeah. whole time. Yeah. It's actually really new. We, what we used to do is a strat where you would, like, get Ashley, like, glitched in a spot and then, um, like, run around and all the enemies would not be able to find you and stuff. But it turns out that this is a little bit faster. And yeah. it's... The other old strat you could only do on controller. So if you were running keyboard, you'd have to have a controller with you too. And so this is a little bit faster and you don't have to do that. Yeah, the Wrecking Ball doesn't have a hitbox there, so we can just like run up against it. Oh, it doesn't have one? No, only it, on that cycle. On the first and second it does. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it actually, I've died I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> but they just decided the third one doesn't have a hitbox for some reason. It can actually push you through the wall and like get you yeah. to the door faster if you get in front of it before it hits oh. it. I think I've watched Pharaoh do that before. Wait. Oh. Whoa. Dunk, dunk. Slam dunk. Here, I'm going to go ahead and bait out another attack here. Oh, come on. Start. Ashley. OK. Uh, yeah, do you guys remember which box the first aid's in in the next room? It has been so long. Uh, I think it's on like the left the side. The left, yeah. Okay, the yeah like left all the way to the left. Yeah. The right side's the shoddy ammo. Yeah, it's been a while since I've had to grab this first aid, but I want to be more safe than sorry right now. Especially yeah. the truck. We've been getting some uh, spicy meatballs here. All right. There you go. So Ashley, it turns out, has a license somehow to drive heavy machinery. And we're just going to go ahead and let her take the wheel here while we sit Leave the back. Leave it to me, Leon. Yeah, this is the longest auto scroller in the entire game, actually. So uh, if you want to go ahead and get like two or three donations, two or three, <laughs> yeah, like you might eight need more. or nine. Yeah. Well, I've got quite a few, so I can definitely do that. Uh, starting off, we have a couple of people jumping in on the donation train. Uh, Jackson Darkminded donates five dollars. Says I can't say no to a donation train. Choo choo. Choo choo. choo, -choo. Six dollars from Kazra. Says all aboard that Final Fantasy six dollar donation train. It's five dollars plus one. Uh, Shauna Suke, five dollars uh, donation train for Final Fantasy VI run. There's no clipping out of bounds to bypass these tracks. Let's do it, everyone! Choo choo! And then uh, two hundred and fifty dollars from Big Dave and Leah. Greetings from Japan. Seeing Resi Four on AGDQ fills me with nostalgia. 
I spent a decent chunk of my high school years speedrunning this game at my grandma's house. We lost to cancer a few years later. Miss you, Grams. Let's all do our best together to stop cancer. Also, hey, it's that dog. Yeah, so these guys right here have realized that running to the truck isn't working, so they're gonna form to make a bigger truck <laughs> right here. Yeah, I don't know why that happens still. Like, if you don't, if you don't shoot those guys, then uh, they just like run back and like huddle up. They don't actually die. Um, yeah. They, they keep up. Like, there's a limit of how many enemies that can be on screen at one time. So, so if that's they run the reason you're only there. seeing one enemy right here is because they're all technically alive still. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they're taking up the space and more enemies can't spawn. He actually does that on purpose so that he can save some shotgun ammo. Yeah. Because we're going to need our shoddy ammo for the park coming up, which is a lot more dangerous. So there is a trick here. Ah, uh, I was too late. But there is a trick there where if you grab anything, I think it's like three frames before that cutscene plays, it actually skips it. I don't think it's ever been done on 60 FPS though, but I've seen it done on 30. And I don't know if anyone can, ever, I don't even know if it's like humanly possible to do on 60 actually, but I've seen it done. I mean, is it frame perfect? Yeah, it's, it's literally frame perfect. Oh, okay, yeah. wow. I think Carpenter did it on like his new game plus like Xbox 360 run and when I saw it I'm like this man is a god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Carp is Carp is a madman. Yeah. Oh, there's only What are you two doing here? All right. There's usually two enemies here but they're usually not standing there. That's okay though. You can just go ahead and get rid of them with the knife. Knife OP. Yep. It's not the RE2 remake knife but uh no. it'll do. <laughs> Yeah, I would say the RE4 knife is actually like one of the more like balanced ones in the entire series. Yeah, it's powerful, but like it's you're, not you're risking you're yeah. risking using it in the first place. So. It's not like RE2 remake or Code, or Code Veronica. Veronica yeah, yeah, where like it hits like every single frame that it's out, which is insane. All right, so uh, we're getting to the dangerous part of the the truck auto scroller. This is the part where uh, the, there's just more enemies, and also they can spawn Plagas now, which are those giant tentacles that come out of their head. And uh, because we're such in like such an enclosed space, we don't want, we we, we just don't want him getting on the truck. Really, it's just not a good. Yeah, and the plagas could still insta kill you. Yes, yeah. you haven't increased your health at all the whole run. It's and just kind of slow to increase your health throughout the run, so we just don't do it. And it's pretty common that like you'll have a lost plagas come out here. Sometimes too. And they can kill Ashley. Yeah, that would also be bad. I guess. I guess. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> So I'm actually going to wait for these two to jump on. Because that allows you to kill them without them spawning a Plagas, actually. When they're in the air? Yeah, yeah. before they land. It's There's a similar trick used in separate ways, actually. Where you just kill them while they're in the, like, the dropping down animation. And like it kind of stops them from spawning Plagas or doing anything else that's kind of funny. All right, so we're at the end. Uh, we're crashed, we've crashed into this strange building. And we're actually going to go ahead and lose Ashley again. At the end of this, at the end of this chapter. But first off, oh no, we need something important. What you Guess what it is? A rocket launcher. And we've lost Ashley again. She's been possessed by uh, Sadler. So something I should mention, lore-wise, both Leon and uh, Ashley have been infected by the Lost Plagas towards the beginning of the game. I think Ashley gets infected before the yeah. game even begins. And Lewis gives them like pills to suppress yeah, the so growth of the parasite. It's like the ticking time bomb of the, the story basically. So we have to like kind of do all this before both Leon and Ashley turn. And uh, Ashley, it's more advanced because it happened before the game. And hence why like uh, Sadler was able to possess her. So we're gonna move on right here, and we're gonna be introduced to uh, an important NPC who was only introduced in this game, but we're like supposed to know who he is for some reason, and that is Krauser. Well, he, he's in Umbrella Chronicles. Oh yeah, yeah, the light rail shooter. How can you yeah. forget? Yeah. <laughs> also, I should mention this is the longest cutscene in the game that we cannot skip because right. it technically counts as like a boss fight, just doing all these QTEs, which are actually very easy to do. Uh, to do. Browser. I died in the crash two years ago. Is that, that what, what they, they told you? you? You're, You're the one who kidnapped Ashley. Ashley. You, you catch on quick, quick. As, as expected. expected. After, After all, you and I both know where we come from. What do you want? want? Hmm. 
the samples. The samples. The samples. 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 That's all. I was a bit early there. <laughs> <laughs> Leave Ashley out of this. Oh, I needed her to buy Sadler's trust in me. Like you, I'm American. Feral. <laughs> 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 Most anime fight I've ever seen in a Resident Evil game. You got, you got hurt, hurt all just for that? Umbrella. Almost, Almost let it slip. Enough, enough talk. talk. Die, Die, comrade. comrade. Ugh. 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 <laughs> Ada. Well, if it isn't the bitch in the room. Whoa. Place. Wow, Krauser. Capital D colon. 2020, bro. <laughs> Yeet. <laughs> You may be able to prolong, your, prolong life. your life, but it's not, it's not like, like you'd escape, escape your inevitable, inevitable death, is it? Is it? You knew Do each other? More or, or less. less. Maybe, Maybe it's about time, time you told me the reason why you're here. here. Maybe some other time. Rejection! <laughs> 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 yeah, as you can guess, we have seen that cutscene literally thousands of <laughs> Too times. Too many times. Yeah, if you run this game for like any amount of time, you're gonna have to just get used to just sitting at that that cutscene. Yeah. Unfortunately, because you have to do the QTEs, you just can't go AFK or anything like that, though. Can't go grab a snack or like get some water or something while you're waiting. All right, so Leon's doing some uh, impressive parkour. Watch this. This man has the body of like an Olympian right here. How does he do it? Inspired by the movie. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're gonna do this for the rondo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Long cheek. There's no time for resting. So there is actually like a practical reason for doing uh, that little that little pose is to show you the treasure that's like on the back end of the room. Mm, yeah, it changes the camera angle yeah. and you can see it shining. So we're gonna move on to like the boss rush of uh, the game. Mm -hmm. it's, it's technically a boss rush. It's like two bosses, but they're both kind of lengthy. And it basically makes up the entire chapter. So coming up, we have U3. Uh, we call him Bono because you know U3 sounds like U2. I call him Bono sometimes. <laughs> Bono. <laughs> Bono. Yeah, he's like, uh, Sadler calls him It. It's like this giant tentacle monster right here. And we're just gonna go like, ahead and run past really him. Yeah. And he crashes through the wall, and it's like, hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we named Pano. <laughs> I thought it was because of, like, U3 just sounds like U2. I guess that's a coincidence. No, there's more lore, man. <laughs> <laughs> that is some deep lore, OK. All right, so we're just going to run past him right here using this uh, ballsy strat. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, Morris actually taught me that one. He showed me, like, you can consistently just run past him right, right there if you do a precise quick turn. And now he's going to throw a hand grenade. Oh, come on. And it's going to hit the uh, the little green button from the other side. Nice. Got it. So a little exploit there. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It skips having to, like, run around. On New Game Plus, I know they use uh, the infinite rocket launcher to, like, just shoot. Right. They just shoot it at the wall, and it hits the, the button. All right, so we're done with that segment, and now here's the actual boss fight, which, uh... Tougher than most bosses. Yeah, very, very Takes tough. Takes more than a rocket. <laughs> <laughs> a rocket and a knife swing. Yeah. Yeah, along with Verdugo, he is one of the more durable bosses, but mm -hmm. he is no match for the almighty rocket launcher, which, again, I just have to stress, like, why the devs allowed you to... 30,000 30, people 30, 30K, like, whenever you want. Like, there's just an infinite supply of them. It's... I don't know. <laughs> All right, so we're going to be moving on now to Krauser, who is the guy we just saw in that uh, wonderful movie that played. 
But first, we have to make a final merchant stop. And uh, this is actually the last merchant we stop in the game. And we're going to have to get rid of our uh, our handy dandy TMP, unfortunately. It's it's uh, been it's been fun TMP. Yeah, Pepe hands. Pepe hands. Yeah, like it served us well, but we need uh, the good old Killer Seven at this point. Now I'm like imagining TMP hands, where like instead of the hands, it's just TMPs. <laughs> All right, and bread night stock. Yeah, bread night stock. No, oh. <laughs> you messed up, streamer. <laughs> Reset. All right. And we actually have a new strat. So this is where you fight Krauser. It's like kind of like a three-phase fight, but uh, we're going to get through them all pretty fast, assuming everything goes uh, according to plan. So right here, we're going to use the Killer 7 to just shoot. Nice. Turns out shooting him in the face is pretty fast. Yeah, it's very, very fast. I've before, actually never seen that before. Wait, what? When did you start doing this? Like a uh, few really months ago, I think. Huh. What? There we go. Yeah, you don't have to mess with knifing him now. Yeah, before uh, we used to come back into this room with uh, Ditman and then just wait for him at the top of the stairs and use the knife on him because, uh, as a lot of people probably know, uh, Krauser is like very, very weak to the knife. Respect like it's them. yeah, it's like it's basically like a magnum shot for him. I was very scared because he pulled out the bow, which uh, that part is RNG right there. What weapon he pulls out like while you're crossing there, and the bow is the most dangerous one by far. Oh. oh. Okay. I messed up there. I was supposed to back up. That was my fault. <laughs> His fortunately, fortunately, the checkpoint is... Yeah, it's nice. like right there, yeah. so it's not too big a deal. And when you restart the checkpoint, it actually fixes his RNG. Yeah, so, so it makes him like spawn behind that wall, which is like a lot easier to run past. Maybe than, just like, does the, oh lord, he coming. All right. There we go. Nice. Nice place. That was a good swing he got on me, but uh, I'm going to work a second time, bud. All right, and now we have this statue push right here, which is like... <laughs> Become ah, one with it. the statue, Mike. That is like... that. This is like the hardest part of this entire fight. I would say it's like pushing this stupid <laughs> yeah. statue. You could skip having to push it back by pushing it exactly the right amount and then pushing it from the side. Yeah, it's very, do. very hard to do though on 60. Like, if your timing is off by even like half a second, it's like, it's over. Well, it's not over, but you lose like five or six seconds having to go fix it. And he was phasing through it because the Dipman glitch is making his animations go faster, yeah. but it doesn't actually make the block push go faster. Yeah, so you just like clip through it, basically. Like the donations, I suppose. <laughs> yes. So we don't respond to him because it's slow. And we're going to move on now to the final phase of the fight, which is probably the most iconic part, where uh, Krauser actually has this giant mutant, like, blade arm thing. But uh, we have a strat to deal with him here. This is actually a pretty tough part. I would say Krauser is like probably the hardest boss besides Del Lago, actually. Just because you you kind of have to fight him legit. Prepare for your death, Leon. Oh. Nah, I didn't get it. Oh. 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 <laughs> Bully this man. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, so I was going for a strat where I was trying to get him in, like, the exact right position so I could hit his face and then his chest, because that kills him about, like, four or five seconds faster. Maybe a little less, but it's it's really, really good. But uh, that's fine as well. As, as long as you don't die, yeah. you're, you're good. Fun fact, if you wait for the timer to end, even after you've killed him and you're, like, doing the puzzle, you'll die anyways. <laughs> Five dash four. Right. If you guys want to explain this, because this is like okay, this part five dash four is probably the reason why a lot of people think that this game is just straight up an action game, which it kind of is, but it kind of isn't really. But it's this part. There's turrets everywhere. There's like a bazillion dudes chasing after you. Mike shows up at a helicopter and starts shooting missiles everywhere. There's there's it's it's insane. There's dynamite. It's just... And as a speedrunner, it's also, like, the most, uh, like, RNG-heavy part of the run. Yeah, I'd yeah, say. yeah. Because, like, you can get shot by archers, like, people can be out of positioning. Like, the turret can hit you, the yeah. space oh, yeah, guy can do that. That can happen, like, it's just super random and, like, huge run killer. And then we got this guy. Yeah, and I'm actually doing a harder strat here than normal. I'm hoping, uh... Oh, nice. He did it. Him there we swinging go. at me is actually really good. 
because then I can reset checkpoint right here. And despawn the enemies. Yeah, the resetting the checkpoint despawns the enemies, and it also it does something that you think would be counterintuitive for the next room, but it actually makes it better. Um, Mike, the helicopter dude that's helping you out, if you reset the checkpoint or die, he's like, sorry, and just leaves and yeah. decides that he's not going to help you out anymore. And an extra archer spawns at the beginning of the room. Yeah, so the room is, like, theoretically much harder, but it actually makes it much more consistent. And that was found, like, pretty recently. Yeah. So I got a bad shield guy, which means I might get hit here. I'm hoping I don't, but I might. Oh, oh okay, the dynamite guy died somehow. All right. All right, that's good. I'm going to have to pick this up, though. It's fortunate. All right, so yeah, this part is pretty chaotic. It's kind of hard to explain while I'm doing it, but I'm just trying to just yeah. run past everything. I'm going to knife this rocket launcher guy right here so he doesn't bother us. Literally everything in the game that can hurt you, except for, like, a regenerator and an avisador, is just packed into a room. Yep. And you're just, the devs yeah. just kind of went ham here. And well, I got lucky. The shield guy climbed up. Nice. And there's like a lot of there's a lot of items that you have to go around and pick up to get through it. But in a speed oh. run, you just also keep no going. crash. Yeah, no, yeah crash. no crash. That's a common crash spot. It's not like super common, but it does happen. Like right at the end of five dash four. Yeah. Yeah. Also, rip Mike. Yeah, rip yeah Mike. we'll we'll go the pay our respects. Pay our respects. Yeah, I'm sure <laughs> they'll pay. All right, they'll pay in their pita breads. <laughs> But yeah, moving on, we have, uh, we're going to the final, like, hard part of the run, as we call it. Like, it's not actually, uh, Sadler, who is, like, the final boss. It's this room we call the War Room. Yeah. And, uh, it's pretty much just as bad as, uh, that triple turret room, I would say. But there is a strat we found not too long ago that's gonna help us, like, deal with the enemies there, but there's still a lot of shenanigans that can happen. I'm gonna get this redder for safety. I would say, like, the war room is actually kind of worse because the checkpoint is terrible. Yeah, it's, like, right here. Yeah, and that's so it. You just have to do the whole room again if you die or you get unlucky or something. We have a lot of heals, though, so I think we'll be okay. Famous last words right there. And Mike is actually gonna be sticking to this right corner here, and that's gonna make it so that some of the Ganados are gonna be spawned upstairs, and because they're not downstairs, they can't stop him when he jumps down the, the ladder. You'll see. And he also threw the flash there to um, flash the Red Hat guy, because the Red Hat guy holds the key card, and it also makes it so that the door stays open. Because yep. again, if the door closes, he has to kick it, and then he loses Dittman, and he has to re -Dittman. And that's why, especially like getting hit in 5 4 loses a lot of time, because then you hit, then you gotta heal, then you gotta redipment, then you gotta switch to what you actually wanna have out, and then you run. And then if you hit again, you have to do it all over again. Ooh, boy. So he's gonna jump down here, and there should be nobody in his way. Nope. Nice. Yep. Just this lone just man. This one guy. Oh, nice throw, bud. Where'd my friends go? You tried. <laughs> yeah, before we kinda just did that room, uh, like, like the, the strat we used before was a lot more inconsistent. When you drop down, there would just be like 20 enemies down there. But that is a lot easier to do yeah, it, though. The two hardest parts of 5-4 are done now. Yeah, the run is basically over at this point. Yeah. Uh, we're just going to move on to uh, the final boss. So I actually told Ashley to wait follow at that corner just so uh, one of those hammer dudes like wouldn't run up on me, because that is what happens if uh, you just run up without doing anything. And right here. Wait. We're just going to tell Ashley to wait, because we don't even need her anymore, really. And pull out our Killer 7. One, two, and uh, our favorite weapon, three. And just for good measure, Sadler actually needs two rocket launchers. He's special in that way. So it ends kind of like most uh, typical Resident Evil games end, like somebody tosses you like the special rocket launcher which you use to one-shot the boss. We're gonna do that, and Ada's gonna give us our jet ski keys to get on out of here. So, before we get to the final part, I just want to make a couple shout-outs, uh, mostly to the speedrunning, the RE4 speedrunning community. It's uh, it's wonderful. We have a massive Discord for anyone who wants to learn this game. There's a lot of resources that we you can use to help learn it. Uh, I want to thank my couch. You guys are awesome. And uh, I kind of want to thank uh, the Japanese community for RE4 specifically. Uh, this game has a massive fan base in Japan, as well as Brazil, but Japan has helped us found, like, Japanese runners have helped us found like a lot of these strats that have been used, so I just want to give them a special. Yeah, and that is the best glitch in the game right there, by the way. Bye, Felicia. But yeah, like all all those people I listed are just wonderful. And we're just gonna take the jet ski on out of here. So time's gonna be coming up as soon as we get to the last cutscene. I'll call it out, but it will be coming up in about like 10 seconds or so-ish. Alright. 
So we're just gonna, this part's pretty free also. Just dodging some debris that falls. Taking these two ramps right here. And time is coming up. Right about now, now time. Nice. One thirty three, nice. Yeah, that was a good run. Yeah. Ashley, where are you? Yeah, I don't know if we want to let this final cutscene play. Just classic overtime. And then he drives away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great idea. Mission accomplished. Right, Leon? Not quite. I still have to get you home safe. Yeah, so, uh, Ada blew all that up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we should have mentioned. Overtime. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Somehow I knew you'd say that, but it doesn't hurt to ask, you know? So, who was that woman anyway? Why do you ask? Come on, tell me. She's like a part of me I can't let go. Let's leave it at that. All right, and that there is RE4, New Game Pro. Hope you guys enjoyed. That was a great run. Yeah. yeah, so again, thank you to the couch. Thank you all for watching. Appreciate it. Check out the Discord if you want. We have a lot of resources there. And yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for that amazing RE4 run, Mike. Give it up for him one more time. Come on. <laughs> All right, got a couple donations here. I'm going to need Chat's help with this one. Honk to prevent cancer. Honk again to thank GDQ staff. Honk again to have honked three times. I'm going to go ahead and throw it on over to our interview team. They're interviewing our Jack 2 runners, so take it away. Thank you very much. My name is Jay Hobbs, and I am joined by Headstrong and Sikinar. How are you both doing today? Doing pretty good. Very good. Yeah, how are the, how are the nerves doing coming up? Uh, you're, you got an awesome race of Jack 2 coming up very shortly. Uh, how, how are, how are you, how's things looking? <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah, I'm as prepared as I, as I could be. Yeah, as much as we can be. Mm -hmm. So I want to know, why is Jack 2 the scariest horror block game of this marathon? <laughs> <laughs> it's scary for sure. It's, uh, <laughs> it's um, a lot of the, the kind of tricks where, you know, you will either get them or you'll, you know, you'll lose you know, upwards of 30 plus seconds. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. It's a lot of do, you, do or you don't kind of things. I, I do know that you were mentioning, I, I always love to point out just like what is a great moment that people can really be looking for and really jump into tuning for. You said there's something like right at the start of the run almost. Yeah, pretty yeah, much. Right at the start, there's the largest gift in the game. So definitely want to keep an eye out for that so you don't miss that part. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of those like you blink and you miss it kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like massive sequence breaks right at the get-go. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've known you both for a few years now and stuff, and so you come to GDQs in the past and all that. And in fact, you both run a lot of different games. But before we get to completely different games, you both have run Jack 1 as well, Jack and Dax for the Precursor Legacy. A little bit. And that is a like completely different run from Jack 2, right? Tell, can you tell me a little bit about that? Like, what, what's the, what, is it just that you still love both the games and you want to keep going in the series? Or what is it that brings you to both of them? The, the different movement between them is just so unique. Because like in Jack 1, you've just got the normal just on-foot movement the whole time, just the roll jumping and normal dumps and stuff like that. But then Jack 2 opens up with the jet board like immensely, mm -hmm. completely different style of gameplay, just so much different from each other. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and like the world design in general for Jack 2, it's a lot more like a GTA style. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of A to B and movement like that. And uh, just because of the way it's kind of designed, getting around is, is very different. Um, 
yeah, it, employing a lot of things like checkpoint abuse and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know as well the combat is incredibly different. Awesome. How, how was it to get used to that, or how important is the combat in the speedrun? It's interesting to get used to having to use the gun rather than just kicking things the whole mm -hmm. time. But the, the kicks are still incredibly important in Jack mm -hmm. 2, too. You certainly employ the, you know, a mix of both. Yeah. There's, there's even like a lot of um, like combat oversights and stuff that involve both, mm -hmm. you know, like chaining combo into a gun or something like that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, like I said, we're going to be seeing a race from both of you. I, I want to know, what, what are your predictions on the race? How are things going in the practice room? Like, who is winning the races? How's the record going between you two? I think me and Headstrong both excel at different things. Mm -hmm. um, and, and because of that, we're actually doing a lot of different strats for the same sections because, you know, we may be comfortable with one over the other. So I really don't know. I, I, it's <laughs> it's going to be fun to see kind of the way we both play. And, uh, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I wanted to ask as well, because like I said, you've done runs of so many games, and we've seen you at previous GDQs before and stuff. I mean, Sticky, you've done runs of Super Metroid, and Ori, I know you in Ori, Ori in the Blind Forest, oh, yeah, especially, and stuff, Headstrong, you've done Jack, one, you've done tons of games, like Kingdom Hearts, <laughs> Superman, ton, tons of different games. What's on the horizon for you after this? Are you just going to be pushing Jack 2? Are you going to Jack 3? Is there some new game like Ori and the Will of the Wisps that's coming oh, out yeah. later? You'll be keeping my eye on <laughs> I've got actually kind of an interesting thing. I'm actually going to be working on doing a run of all six Jack games oh, all wow. in a row. So I'm going to start working on that relatively soon afterwards. Tomato, tomato Angus, eat your heart out because we're going to get the next <laughs> anthology run from Jack anthology run? That would be hype. <laughs> Sticky, how about you? What, what, what are you looking forward to later? <laughs> you know, uh... I did put down Jack 2 for a little bit, uh, kind of given a break, and then since picking it up, uh, I've been having a lot of fun with it. And it's, it's, it's a really different run from what it was, you know, before, like uh, back in 2017 when I ran it then. Um, so there's, there's, I feel like I have a lot of work to do in that category. Uh, so you can expect that pretty much, just staying with Jack. Nice. Mm. Cool. I always love to, to be able to, like, catch that pre- and post-GDQ grind. There's a different, oh, yeah, different it, pressure, different atmosphere to sure, it. Sure, right? yeah, because oh, sure. before, you know, you're kind of running for a consistency, you know, mm -hmm. eight, you know just finishing runs. So. Yeah, I was going to say, when it comes to practicing this game and preparing for GDQ, do you find that you are more about doing no reset runs, or um, have you done, you just want to do a lot of practice races leading up to it, or um, do either of you focus more on individual tricks some you know individual level practice, anything like that. What's your approaches? I did a ton of races, which is a bunch of other people in the Jack Two community, and then just no resets constantly to just try and make myself get through the run. Right. <laughs> I think I think uh, I sort of I start I do a lot of segmented stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I I do acknowledge it's important to do it in context. So uh, yeah, races like with Headstrong, we've been doing a lot of those. Uh, definitely helps build up a, a sense for it. Awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to that one, and it is not very far away because up next we have The Last of Us Left Behind, which is a very short run. So if you are interested at all in Jack and Dexter speedrunning, specifically the Jack 2 race, be sure to stick around and tune in for that one. I wish I had more time to dig into the intricacies of this game, but Headstrong, Sticky, thank you so much for joining me thank you. and Thanks talking to us a little bit about it, and good luck on the race. Mm -hmm. we'll thank you so see, much. We'll thank have to you. see who ends up winning. I'm putting my bets on... No, I can't. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I copped out with that one. All right, I'm going to throw it back up to those because we are almost ready for that run of Last of Us. See you all later. Thank you, Jay Hobbs. Uh, I do want to mention that run coming up is very short, and then we have the Jack 2, and after that is Marvel Spider-Man, and we still need about $10,000 for that ultimate difficulty incentive, so let's get those donations in. Let's see that. You don't want to miss it. Uh, but before we get into that, I'm going to throw it over to a quick Twitch ad, and we'll be right back.
and welcome back to Awesome Games Done Quick 2020, uh, benefiting Prevent Cancer Foundation. The Prevent Cancer, Cancer Foundation, founded in 1985, is a U.S.-based nonprofit organization. Their mission is to save lives across all populations through cancer prevention and early detection by focusing their work through research, education, outreach, and advocacy. Their vision is to stop cancer before it starts. You can find out more information about PCF at preventcancer.org. We have a $500 donation from Words209. It says $5 train for Final Fantasy VI. Let's suplex that train just in case the run doesn't. Love y'all. $15 from Jose153. It says, roses are red, violets are blue. I can't rhyme, just honk on cue. We have another $500 from JD the Bud. Says, time for more Final Fantasy? Let's get the hype train rolling. 